Hi, it's Nathaniel Whiston here and you join me once again for another episode of Sporting Heroes of West Anglia. Today I'm travelling to the village of Wollaston. It's to the southeast of Great Doddington, to the north of Strixton and to the south of Wellingborough. It's in East Northamptonshire and it's in West Anglia. Today's sporting hero of West Anglia is no stranger to the Green Bays. That's right, I'm talking about snooker and none other than a man who's had nine ranking tournament wins, including UK champion and world champion. He's had over 350 century breaks, which must be when you score more than 100 points. And he's also earned over three and a half million quid just by knocking a few balls around the table. Today, I'm talking about the force, Peter Ebden. Some viewers may not be that familiar with snooker. Let me make it easy for you. It's a lot like pool. It's about knocking balls into pockets using a cue. Snooker gets slightly complicated because you have to hit a red ball and then you have to hit a coloured ball. There's green and blue and black, well, you know what colours are. And then you get different points depending on different colours that you pop. Red is one and then the other colours are black seven, I know that, black's the big one. And then you have to score more points than your other person that you're playing against. That's snooker in a nutshell. I'm travelling to the village of Wollaston today. More specifically, I'm travelling to Summer Lee's Nature Reserve, which is sort of between Wollaston and Great Doddington. The reason I'm going there is that it's Peter Ebden's part of the world, and I thought it would make a lovely backdrop to tell the Peter Ebden story. He actually was born and grew up in Islington in North London, but like so many others, to fulfil his dream of being the best snooker player ever, he had to come to West Anglia and Wellingborough. And where we're going today is just a couple of miles south of Wellingborough. I was hoping to get some extra special footage today because Peter Ebden moved to Dubai in 2005 and was there for about four years or so. And my friend Jeremy moved to Dubai with his wife Liz not long ago. So I got in touch with him and I said, can you track down Ebden's house in Dubai for me? Take some footage, talk a little bit about the house, about Peter Ebden, if you could do that for me, that would be great. And he was hesitant at first and then I persuaded him and he agreed to go. But, well, the problem is he didn't know what he was looking for. So the footage he sent me, right, it's him just walking down some residential street, waving a camera around. The, the quality's terrible, you can barely hear him. And he points a camera at a house and goes, oh, well, I think he lived here. Oh, he might have been here. Oh, is that it? I don't know. Absolutely useless. It, it's, it's unusable. I, I should add it to this video just to embarrass him, but it, it, it makes me look bad by doing that. So I would have liked to have shown you some video of Peter Ebden's place in Dubai, but sadly I can't, all because of the ineptitude of my friend Jeremy. I'm not a million miles away from Farndish, where H.E. Bates used to hang out, as documented in one of my Writers of West Anglia videos, and also Whiston, which is over there which I suspected is where Errol Flynn used to hang out, as documented in one of my Hollywood stars of West Anglia videos. If you're able to recognise any of that countryside just by looking out of my car window here, then good for you, you must have the eyesight of a barn owl. Reversing in and 
not a bad job. And we're here, we're in Wollaston, or more specifically, Summer Lee's Nature Reserve near Wollaston. You may be asking Nathaniel, why haven't you gone to Wellenborough, where Peter Upton actually lived? And it's only a couple of miles in that direction. I've decided to come to the Summer Lee's Nature Reserve because, well, first of all, Peter Ebden was robbed in Wellingborough a few years ago and I thought it would be silly of me to go to his house and show robbers where he lives now. It kind of encourages them to go and do it again. Second of all, I think he probably would have come here to rest, clear his head, need to think about snooker, he wants to come somewhere peaceful. And this is very peaceful, apart from the road just there, but the rest of it's fine. And thirdly, I wanted to get some green, some green grass, almost like fields of green, because thematically it goes in with snooker, the green bays, the green on the table and the green here. Do you see? The snooker theme, the green, that's what I'm going for. So that's why I'm here. Peter Ebden is an accomplished snooker player, but he also had a singing career. In 1996, he released a cover of the David Cassidy song, I Am A Clown. He later released a follow-up single called Fall of Paradise. He must have seen the success that Chaz and Dave had with the Matchroom Mob in 1986. Their song, Snooker Loopy, got to number six in the charts. There were multiple snooker players involved in that song though. Peter Ebden must have seen this and thought, I need to get all the royalties for myself. So by releasing two songs on his own, he could do exactly that. I don't know how well Fall of Paradise and I'm a Clown did in the charts, but it was a great business decision by Ebden. I'm now in this bird shed, I think they call it. And we can see some of the wildlife here. Apparently there's a lot of uncommon, unusual birds that congregate here. It's not something which is my specialty, so I'll let you listen to the squawks and cries of some of these animals and perhaps you can identify them yourselves. This nature reserve is also home to the hairy dragonfly, which is a rare species of dragonfly. And if I spot one buzzing around today, I'll put the camera on it. And there's a connection to Peter Ebden there because when he first came onto the scene, when his snooker career began in the early 90s, he was famous for having a long ponytail. So, hairy dragonfly, ponytail, that's definitely a connection. I don't know why they didn't give him the nickname, the hairy dragonfly. It would have worked because he's from around here, and so's the hairy dragonfly. There's some buzzing there. Oh, it's, it's a wasp. One of the hallmarks of Peter Ebden's game is his slow play, that is taking an incredibly long time between each of his shots. Some of his opponents have complained about it in the past. There was um, Judd Trump, funny name I know, but that's his name, and um, uh, Graham Dot. I think that was his name. Anyway. Um, yeah, they've complained about his slow play and they felt strangled by the, by the slow speed and they're just sitting there waiting, endlessly sipping water, waiting for Ebden to take his shot. I don't know what they're complaining about really. Isn't snooker supposed to be slow? It's like going to the Olympics 100 metre final and going, oh it was rubbish, everyone was too fast. Yeah. That's the point. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Snooker is slow. This lake here is very interesting to me in a Peter Ebden context because he's very forward thinking in his fitness. He does a lot of exercise, he has a vegan diet and he swims for a mile every day. It's entirely possible that he started doing that routine here in this lake here, going for a swim, not far from his Wellingborough home. This is a wonderful spot to come to and 
have a think, be meditative, contemplate your life, your dreams, your aspirations, where you want your life to go, where it's going, what's happened to it. Well, I can't do that. I've got a documentary about Peter Ebden to be getting on with. The highlight of Peter Ebden's career came in 2002 when he became world snooker champion, beating Stephen Hendry 18-17 in a thrilling final that went right to the wire. That was the last final that Stephen Hendry appeared in and he'd already won seven. So as he was slain by Ebden, that must surely mean that Ebden was not only better than Hendry, but he was better than all the people that Stephen Hendry beat as well. Here's a sign which is telling us what to look out for. It's not telling us about the hairy dragonfly. Oh no, there it is. See? Incredibly, Ebden is colourblind. Can you believe that? The one sport that entirely relies on your ability to tell colours apart and he's colourblind and he became world champion at it. It's incredible, it's like, it's like a, a, a jockey being afraid of horses or a tennis player being allergic to grass or a, a, a snooker player being colourblind. It blows my mind. Well done him, well done Peter Epton. All those snooker players who aren't colourblind and haven't become world champion yet, Pull your socks up. You may not know this, well, I didn't know this, that Northamptonshire and by extension West Anglia is a hotbed for world snooker champions. We had Ebden in 2002, and then we had Sean Murphy in 2005, and he's from Earthling Borough, again, Northamptonshire, not a million miles away from here. I looked to see if there was then a trend every three years a West Anglian world snooker champion and in 2008 it was Ronnie O'Sullivan who is from Essex and I could find no connection then in 2011 it was John Higgins and he's from Wishaw in Scotland so no connection so far however I will predict that there will be another West Anglian world snooker champion soon Despite releasing a single called I Am A Clown, Peter Ebden is quoted as saying, I don't do fun, what I do is seriousness. Fun is winning. I get enjoyment out of winning. And I can understand that. Snooker doesn't look like much fun to me. I think more sports people should come out to places like this, snooker players especially. They spend so long in those dark rooms that they need some fresh air, some light. I know that practicing is important, they need to work on that, but surely snooker is mostly angles. As long as you know those, you'll be fine. And you can think about angles while you're walking around here. That would be my recommendation to any snooker players watching. Come out to somewhere like this. I've had a lovely walk doing the loop around Summerlee's Nature Reserve near Wollaston, near Wellingborough, the home of snooker player extraordinaire Peter Ebden. Snooker still baffles me, but who's to say, a couple of years from now I could be one of the most devout fans of the sport, as enraptured in the game as all those other people who go to watch tournaments and so on. That's it for today. I'm Nathaniel Whiston and I hope to see you again next time for another episode of Sporting Heroes of West Anglia. Goodbye.